The goal of this unit is to show you the nuts and bolts of how a couple of simple ODE solvers work. Recall from the previous unit that an ODE solver's task is to take an ODE and an initial condition and figure out where the trajectory goes next. Now, hark back to the notion of an ODE as defining a vector field, telling you, for every point in the state space, the direction that is dynamically downhill. That is, what the slope of the landscape is. The example that I'm going to use to illustrate this is the same one that we've been playing with for a couple of units now, the simple harmonic oscillator. Now remember I said that ODE solvers want their inputs in the form of n first order ODEs, so I've written down the simple harmonic oscillator equations in that form here. I've also chosen to use k equals m equals 1 and g equals 0 to make things really simple. The state space of this system looks like this, and as I mentioned, that pair of first order ODEs tells you for every point in the state space which direction is downhill. If, for example, x is 1 and v is 2, then x dot, which is the slope in the x direction, the side to side slope on my picture, is 2, and v dot, the slope in the v direction, the up and down direction in my picture, is minus 1. To figure out what direction is downhill, that is the fall line, you do a vector sum of those two vectors. The red vector is x dot, the black vector is v dot, you notice it's pointing down and it's half as long as the red vector. The resultant is again the vector sum of those two, that blue vector there. Now the obvious thing to do if you want to figure out where a ball is going to roll in a landscape is simply to follow the slope, that is, Given some point, like that blue point, you figure out which way is downhill, and then you roll along that derivative vector. That algorithm that we've just outlined is called forward Euler. By the way, some people call this just the Euler method. The naming conventions in the numerical computing field can be a little funky. Now, next issue. It's all very well to think about rolling along the derivative vector, but you have to think pretty hard about how far to roll along that vector. Intuitively, you can pretty easily imagine that rolling for a long distance along a derivative vector could be a very bad idea if the landscape is bumpy. Here I'm drawing in cross-section to show you a bumpy landscape and to show you that the derivative vector is only a good approximation to the landscape if you follow it only a little way if the landscape is very bumpy. But on the other hand, taking shorter steps means doing more of them to get to the same place and that's more work. This is a standard kind of trade-off in many parts of life, effort versus accuracy. And this trade-off will come back two units from now, when we talk about adaptive step size ODE solvers. Now, what does it mean mathematically to roll along the derivative vector? A derivative vector is d space d time. Rolling along a derivative vector for some delta t is equivalent to multiplying d space d time by delta t which gives you an incremental change in space, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to see how far in state space we move in a particular increment in time. That delta t, the time step, which I will sometimes call h, just because it's easier to write, is actually a third input to an ODE solver. And the output of the ODE solver is where x will be at t0 plus delta t. That time step input tells the solver how fine-grained of a solution you want. Of course, since you don't know the landscape, you don't know how fine-grained you need to be in order to get things right. That, too, will come back later. Here is the mathematics of forward Euler. This just says that where you will be, delta t later, is where you are plus how far you would move by rolling down the slope where you are for delta t seconds. I'm going to go through an example here with the simple harmonic oscillator so that you can see how this works. Let's consider the initial condition, xv equals 1, 0. Just to remind you, the equations look like this. And we're going to use a time step of 0.1. And then we're going to plug in to figure out what x and v will be 0.1 seconds later. And we get this using the equation above. This vector right here, I got by plugging this vector into this equation. So the final result here is and that's what exactly what we would expect for the simple harmonic oscillator. Remember the tangent vector here points straight down and forward or there walks a little bit out along that vector. Problem. Again, here I'm drawing in cross section, not in state space. So we're looking sideways at the dynamical landscape. And if the forward Euler algorithm walks directly out along the derivative at the current point, this could be a very bad outcome. A solution in this situation you can take a test step using forward Euler, 
Compute the slope out there and then use that slope rather than the slope at the original point to move forwards from that original point. I will call that backward Euler. Again, it has other names. Here's the mathematics of what I just described. The main difference here is the subscript on the last term. This term is not the derivative at the original point, but the derivative at the point where you get to if you took one step with forward Euler with that time step. I'm going to go through an example from the same initial condition with the same ODE that we just did with forward Euler and show you how this works. We did this before. We know what the result of taking one forward Euler step forward under the influence of that dynamics from that initial condition with that time step. That's the value over there, 1, negative 0.1. Here's how you figure out where backward Euler will go. Again, the way I got this vector was by plugging this vector into this ODE. And the result's a little bit different, as you can see here. In the next unit, we'll see what these solver algorithms do to the simple harmonic oscillator.